I had never built a mini ITX system before, so I wanted to know how new proof the NR200P Max is. Basically, it's a mini ITX case with the cooler and power supply already installed, which means we just have to put the motherboard in with the RAM and CPU, along with the drives, plug some cables in, and done. And that's actually how easy it was. The hardest part was installing the graphics card. They give you a riser cable, 4th gen, worth about what, $70 or so depending where you're from? But it's this awkward part here where you have to take the back section off and somehow plug it into the riser. Other than that though, this case was easy to build with, as most of it is actually done for you. Anyway, let me take you through this build, because I'm now questioning why I even need a full PC. These tiny PCs can be moved so easily between setups, I don't actually need to have multiple computers. They're amazing. I just need more USB ports. Okay, starting with the parts I'll be using. Some of these were supplied to me for the purpose of this build. Other parts I bought, like the Asus Z590i motherboard, to go along with the Intel 10850, but then I wasn't able to use the Seagate Fire Cuda 2TB NVMe drives together. Although, quick note, I didn't buy these. I've been using Seagate drives for years, so I'm hoping to partner with them for more projects, this being the first. Anyway, turns out I needed an 11th gen CPU, otherwise I couldn't use both these drives at once, so I upgraded to an 11900 instead. That's an expensive mistake to make, hoping I can save people some money by pointing that out. I want to use this PC as my main editing rig, so I'm using dual 2TB NVMEs and an 8TB for storage. Video files can get massive, so I need a lot. Next, I reached out to G-School because they make my favourite memory. Big fan of these crystal designs, as you probably know if you've seen my main editing rig. For the record, I bought all 128GB for this main system. I definitely put my money where my mouth is on this. But this time around, G-School were nice enough to supply me with 64GB of 3600 CL18 DDR4. So the Trident Z Royal. Big thanks to them for the continued support. I also bought an Asus TOF 3070 Ti, because amazingly, this case can support huge cards. The included power supply is the Cooler Master V850 SFX Gold, so you could run a 3090 in here too. Also comes with a 280mm radiator, and they also include this, a glass panel side. But as I'll be moving this computer a lot, I'm going to stick with the metal one. And now let's look at the build process. The panels come off really easily, just pull from the top, take out the packaging, get the box out and all that. Inside you'll get all the usual cables and screws, including mount options. For this one, we're using Intel obviously. So installing the CPU, putting on the bracket, put in the RAM, and install the NVMe drives now too. Shout out to Gear Seekers for the guide on how to do it. I'll leave a link to that video in the description. Also shout out to Optimum Tech for the guide on how to build in this too. I'm just going to go through it quickly. He knows builds better than I do, so if you want to build in this, go watch his video. However, as a noob to Mini ITX, I can say so far that this is actually really easy. Now moving on, you then have to undo these ties, get the cables ready, and as said, a lot of it is done. This screw hole worried me a bit because the cables go either side, but it seems like they don't touch, so it should be okay. I hope I'm right about that. Seems to be working so far. Once the motherboard is in, get the cables ready, and the thermal paste, which they include. And this is where I put on the cooler, and as everyone says, make sure you remove the plastic. Then I plugged in the fans at the back, and then I had to choose where to mount the drive. You can put it on the power supply, but I decided putting it on the bottom of the case is actually better. It seems to fit nicely under there. I wasn't sure what to do with the extra cables, but turns out they actually help prop up the graphics card. So undo these screws, get the riser cable ready, but as Optimum Tech said, you should plug the power in first. And then I put the riser in, and I eventually got it in. This really wasn't as easy as I would have liked. It's actually quite awkward. Like I eventually got it, but I had to do it a few times and it definitely took me longer than expected. But yeah, then I left these starter power connectors under the riser cable and beneath the graphics card. These cards are big and heavy. Maybe they should include something we can attach to the case. Just something to help prop them up. For now, I hope I'm okay doing this, but I'm just going to use the plastic of the cables. And yeah, that's it. Done. Really easy. And considering what you get, as the other channels are pointing out, this is great value. It was sent to me by Cooler Master, but that's because I wanted it early. I would have been happy to pay the $500 Australian. In America, that's about $350. So as a mini ITX noob, I can give this my approval. Except the GPU thing. If they can find a simpler way of doing that, and also give it some support, then it would have been perfect. And yeah, I don't see why I need a full system other than when I stream and test products. If I can find a good way of getting extra USB ports, I probably won't even need a full system for that. But all that in mind, I'm not sure I'd want to build a mini ITX system without all these extras already installed. Still prefer working with more space. But given I didn't have to do much, this was really good. So hope that helps. 
Special thanks to Coolmaster, Seagate and G-Skill for helping with the build. Use your links below, subscribe, like and share, and I'll catch you in the next.